Howdy friends, welcome back to another episode of the Port Ferry Ferry. It's been a little while since I've spoken to you guys regarding my marathon training. So as we're closing out the month of January and I guess my last recovery week of this entire plan, I thought now would be a really good time to catch up and to discuss the I guess, training plan thus far with just a few weeks to go. Uh, we've just literally passed, I guess, the three quarter mark of this marathon training plan and it's it's just been a whirlwind honestly um, I've got a notes open here with just a few key points that I want to talk through today and I've titled this document 13 weeks down four to go it has been such yeah such an amazing experience to, to put it simply but it's been a whirlwind it's gone so fast and I was just amazed when I was getting this uh, this information collected earlier today uh, with just how much running I've done and I've got to say that this training plan um, albeit as enjoyable as it has been has really made me question just how much I love running and by no means have I lost my love for running but I think any serious bout of training should really put you up against the wall and really make you question why am I doing this? Believe me, I've been there a few times during the training plan um, and I'm really grateful for it because to be honest, it's been a fairly long plan. You know, it's gonna be about 17 weeks in total, including my two weeks of tapering. Um, but, you know, had you asked me before I started this plan, how do you feel about some of the weeks that you've got coming up? How do you feel about some of the sessions that you're gonna be doing along the way? How do you think your body's going to cope with it? How do you think you'll be coping mentally? I'm not sure that I would have been able to, of course I'd have been hopeful, but I'm not sure I would have been able to say with confidence that yes, I'm confident I can hit those paces, I can hit those uh, that mileage for the week um, and be able to walk ever again. Um, I'm not sure I would have been able to say that with confidence. So I'm really, really stoked with how far I've come mentally and physically during this block. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's been an absolute dream. So before we get into today's video, into the shoe rotation that I've used for this, I guess, marathon build, how I've been feeling throughout the weeks, or more specifically, the more recent weeks since I last spoke to you guys in the Port Ferry Ferry series, um, as well as talking about some funny stats that I found along the way, I just wanted to thank the sponsors of this training series which is, first of all, the Tony Smith Running Club. I'm not sure that I would have got this far into my marathon training without these guys, and I certainly know that I wouldn't be as fit as I am without Tony's help. So massive thank you to the TSRC crew, and I'd love to just give a quick shout out to Bix Hydration, who are also sponsoring this training series. In the six weeks or so since Bix came on board to sponsor me, I have used Bix almost every day. But regarding the electrolyte tablets, all I can say is that they are absolutely top-notch in flavour, really tasty. I've been really enjoying the grape and the grapefruit flavours, but also Bix were kind enough to support my recovery through my trainings. I've also been using a daily recovery supplement sent by Bix, which just has a host of health benefits. I'll put those on screen now. But I have to say that thanks to Bix, my hydration, my recovery is absolutely through the roof and I'm feeling better and better between sessions. So thank you again to TSRC and to Bix Hydration. I will link those guys down below. So let's get into the video. Before we jump in, I just wanted to point you guys in the direction of a podcast that I had the pleasure of recording last week. I actually was featuring on Ben Curtis's podcast here on YouTube, his Be Optimum podcast, which will be linked down below. And me and Ben spoke for over two hours on all subjects relating to depression, sobriety, addiction, as well as my own thoughts on endurance running, marathon running, and I talk a little bit about photography in there too. So if you guys are interested in a bit more of a deep dive on my history and what makes me me, do make sure to go and give that a listen. Ben has also released this week some pretty interesting little snippets from our conversation if you just want some quicker takes. All of that will be linked down below, of course. So it's coming up to just over a month ago since I last spoke to you guys regarding the Port Ferry Marathon training, and that was in episode 10 of the Port Ferry Ferry. So that was back in the end of December. So how has January been for me? How has it shaped out? And how am I feeling fitness-wise? 
In short, I am amazed by how well I've been able to absorb the training. It just feels like so much running has been done. And I've got some quick stats here, which to be honest, when I was writing them down earlier, it just seemed ridiculous. But all in all, my training this far, so 13 weeks into the marathon training, since November 2022, I've run 1300 kilometers. So 430 for the month of November, 470 for the month of December. And so far in January, today's the 21st, I've run 399Ks. So a crazy amount of mileage for me. I honestly, I, as I said in the intro, I don't think I would have thought that I would have been able to get that many Ks in um, at the start of the block, had you asked me. But for the sake of January, I mean, I've been smashing out the weeks. I've just had this recovery week. Um, I've definitely felt a little bit of rough around the edges, but the coach has assured me that this is pretty normal during this period. Um, but in the last few weeks, I've definitely felt a huge boost in my fitness. The long runs last Sunday, I ran a 36 kilometer long run with seven times 3K marathon effort in there. And I just absolutely cruised for it. I felt fantastic. And that was 21 K is almost a half marathon effort at marathon pace in a 36 kilometer long run. And I just felt absolutely brilliant. And that isn't a workout that I probably would have ever said I could do, to be honest. Um, and literally every Sunday this month, I've just been out getting the long runs in. I've just been smashing them and it's just felt so easy. The long runs and the sessions have honestly just been a breeze. I've just taken them one at a time, looked at the app on Final Surge, the app that we're using, and seen the session, just gone out and done it. I'm not looking ahead. I'm not really thinking too much about my plan of attack, just seeing the pace zone and just being sensible. Hopefully getting a progressive, I guess, trajectory over the session, making sure I don't go up too hard and then, you know, really get that downward pace line over the course of the session. But I have to say that with the end of this recovery week coming to an end, I've got tomorrow's the long run, I'm recording this on a Saturday, so I've just got one more day of running to go. That's tomorrow's 25k long run. I've got two more build weeks followed by a two week taper. So I'm really, really close to the big day. As I said, just 29 days out from the marathon now. So things are getting really exciting. And I thought for the sake of this episode, just before we wind down with the training, it would be good to dive in to some of the stats from this training plan all the way back since November when I started the Port Ferry Ferry training series. So for those of you guys that tuned in to the early episodes of this series, I actually did a bit of a gel face off where I gave a few different gels from different brands a kind of scoring and my reasons for that scoring. So I was actually quite interested in how many gels I've consumed over this block. I think I'd reviewed like five or six, but actually I've been using Morton throughout this series, not only for my long runs, but also prior to one of my speed sessions per week. So I'm not using a gel on all of my sessions, but I've just been making sure that to train my gut, I wanted to be able to take on a gel when I'm running slightly quicker than marathon pace. So usually this is during my warm up. Just after I've done my strides, I'll take that gel on and I'm really trying to be aware of how that gel is sitting in my stomach when I'm running at faster paces. So I've got pretty much one session during the week on one of my sessions. And then my long runs last week's 36K, I believe I took on five gels for that whole session. So likely four non-caffeinated Morton gels and one caffeinated. That's sort of the approach I've been taking to my long runs. But in the shorter long runs, like tomorrow's 25K, I may just take on one or two gels. I'll see how I feel. But over the course of this block, I've had a variety of long run lengths and some of the sessions in the week have actually been quite hard and quite gruelling on the body. So I have taken a Morton gel after the session on some days just to help that recovery kick in a bit. So I've counted in total four this entire training plan thus far, so I've still got a couple of weeks of hard training to go. This far into the training, I've taken 36 gels in total, which November, December, and I guess January, 36 gels in three months, that's a lot of gels. I don't know what that equates to a week, but yeah, that's a lot of gels. So sessions wise, I am really interested in how many speed sessions, I guess you could call them strength sessions as well. This includes heels, 
intervals, fart lick sessions, progression sessions. Um, so basically anything quicker than marathon pace. I've counted that during this entire 13 week period, I've done 22 sessions. And then you might be interested to learn that I've actually only done 10 long runs during this whole period. So long runs, I guess I'm counting anything over than sort of 24, 25K. And the reason being is that just so many of my runs are around that 30, 32, 34, 36K mark. And actually I think that anything under that sort of two hours for me doesn't really feel like a long run. I've been doing quite a few sort of midweek longer runs, like 20K-ish. And on these runs, it just really sort of feels like me that that is just an extended easy effort and not so much a long run. But yeah, I've done 10 long runs throughout this whole training plan. So I was quite surprised by that. I actually thought that I may have done a few more long runs than that, but yeah, it's quite an interesting, I guess, take on actually all these stats is that actually these, I guess, components training my um, stomach to cope with those gels going in, getting those sessions in, those 22 sessions and those long runs, which really are the bread and butter of marathon training. You can have everything else. If you don't have that long run endurance, probably not gonna do too well on marathon day. So yeah, some quite interesting components to take into an account there. But yeah, 1300 Ks since November. That to me is, yeah, it does seem pretty mind blowing really. I mean, that is so many, so such a distance that that just seems crazy. And I haven't broken down into, I guess what that is per day because I don't really feel like that's a metric that reflects where I'm at with the marathon training. I think that to really pay a march to Tony, my coach, who's planned out this entire marathon training venture, there's been so much variety and so much uh, thought gone into when am I going to be recovering? How is the session going to benefit me as an athlete? And actually, how is my fitness going to correlate with the increasing demands of my workouts over time? So to give you an example, early on, in this training plan, my first block, my first four week block involved heel sessions. And heels were something that Tony knew that I didn't have too much experience with. I told him this, and actually, any times I hit heels in marathons, I didn't really have a different gear to switch to, to take on those heels. I'd sort of run everything at the same pace and cadence, funnily enough. So working on those heels earlier in this block or earlier in this plan, I should say, it really helped me to build that strength. And actually, I know it's something that has benefited me massively throughout this whole marathon training plan. So had Tony put my heels right in at the end, maybe in this last block, which really has been the second, I guess, 40% of this training plan, maybe I wouldn't have benefited so much than I have had having those heels way at the beginning of the session. So a really nice intricacy, I guess, to take into account there. But, you know, of course I wanna give the caveat that everyone's different and I wouldn't necessarily recommend to everyone that they start off their marathon training plan with heels. As I say, that is a weakness that I know I had. But I think as an interesting uh, bit of information to share with you guys from my findings during this marathon training plan is actually how things have felt on the shoe front. So I wanted to include this because of course, these things are ever changing and my marathon training shoe and and racing shoe, which I have on the table here, the Alpha Fly 2, is an absolute favorite of mine. I think it's a wicked shoe. But actually, since I put a, a few more miles into this shoe, I think I'm just coming up to about 200 Ks in this shoe. I'm actually really starting to feel that maybe I prefer this shoe after a little bit more uh, mileage than straight out of the box. I think I'm enjoying this more and more every day. But actually, it's making me really appreciate the value of such a versatile shoe like the Nike Vaporfly even more. And actually, I've really found during this, this training plan that a really, in my opinion, underrated shoe, just a really solid and reliable option, something like the Sikoni Endorphin Pro 2, I think that this shoe is an absolute must. I think to have a slightly more stable and just robust um, carbon shoe, I think it is really valuable. So let's just start off by talking about my daily runners during this block. So really the foundation of my miles are done in daily shoes. Now I love Sikonis. I think that Sikonis 
really just deliver in terms of comfort, in terms of durability, in terms of really getting the same from the shoe, went straight out of the box, all the way to six, 700 Ks. I think the Ciccone's really deliver. There's not much to them. There's a nice bit of technology going on in the Ciccone Omni series. I also really like the Ciccone Rides, but really they're pretty basic and you get a pretty good bang for your buck because you can pick these guys up really cheaply. I believe this particular pair of Ciccone Omni 19s, I picked up for less than $100, which is about 60 pounds in the UK. But so a really solid shoe. But this shoe, this is Ciccone Omni. I've also got the Ciccone Ride here, as I mentioned, very similar looking shoes. But the Ciccone Omni 20 here, that I'm currently only about 300 Ks into, this I've literally done 70% of my marathon training in. So a non carbon plated shoe, all of the Ciccones that I've mentioned, apart from the Endorphin Pro 2, have no carbon plate. All they have is just this really nice power run midsole technology. They've got this really nice form fit built in sole within the shoe that I just find really helps to protect the feet, protects the ankle on those runs. And they're pretty forgiving to be honest. I've been running a lot of trails on a lot of different cambers and actually I found that this shoe is just an always, always a solid pick. So all of my warm ups, all of my warm downs and my strides pretty much are in the Ciccone's. They're pretty cheap to replace and pretty reliable on feet. So moving in to the carbon shoes, which I'm primarily using for my sessions and even my long runs, as I moved through my training plan, I wasn't actually using carbon shoes too much. I was probably opting for something like the Ciccone Omni 20 more and more, just because I knew I could rely on it. And it's just, it's gonna keep asking my legs for work, not something like the Alpha Fly 2, which to be honest, I could pretty much plod along all day in without thinking too much at least the non-carbon plated shoes were actually getting me to work a bit more on my long runs which is really important in the later stages of a marathon but when i'm talking about my carbon shoes i'm specifically talking about speed so as soon as i started to have marathon pace half marathon pace and so on intervals in my long runs that's when i started using my race shoe for this training plan for this marathon which is the uh, Alpha Fly 2, as I mentioned, just a solid shoe. It's so light, it's still in my hand now. I can't believe how light this shoe is. Um, but for me, it just fits like a glove. And honestly, when it's on, I don't even realize I'm wearing it. Of course, you can hear this thing slapping down on the pavement from a mile away. Um, but all in all, I just find it just really forgiving. And even though it's quite a big shoe with that massive drop and all that Lumix foam, I can still keep my cadence up quite high. I like to tick over around the 185 strides per minute and I don't find there's any issue doing that. But I will say that in terms of keeping up that turnover and not noticing anything on being on my feet, I do think that the Nike Vaporfly 2 still takes the crown. I absolutely love this shoe. I also have this blue pair, and to be honest, this blue pair is still over 600 Ks in this shoe. Sometimes I do just whack it on just to do a session in. But I do have to say that a pair like this with just under 300 Ks in the shoe just they feel bloody amazing so all my faster 5k 10k efforts probably anything under a half marathon i really love chucking this shoe on i just think it's so responsive and i have no issue keeping up that high turnover so about 190 strides per minute feel effortless in this shoe there's just so much energy return so snappy um, and I personally love it. Again, another shoe that I think really gives back the more you run in it. So to be honest, between these two shoes, I'm probably nearing about a thousand Ks in the Nike Vaporfly. Um, and I think that my legs, I think that my feet especially are getting to know this shoe more and more. Um, and I'm just feel like I'm getting more and more confident in this shoe over time. Of course, there's still quite a big drop in this shoe. So it's not gonna be the most stable so if you're thinking about picking up a pair of this shoe, do just proceed with caution at first. Definitely ease your way into it because it's quite an aggressive shoe. And that leads me on nicely to the Ciccone Endorphin Pro 2. Now, I'm not sure what it is about this shoe, but I definitely feel like it's got better over time. Maybe there is just a confidence that I lacked in this shoe at first. It's just so different to the likes of the Nike Vaporfly in terms of feel, in terms of fit, and I guess snappiness as well. It just doesn't feel quite as as though it has quite as much energy return as the Nike series 
Although I will say that this shoe in particular feels so much more like my daily runners than the Nikes do. I do feel like I'm just being a lot more supported in this shoe. And actually, I do just feel like if I ever have any aches or pains chucking this shoe on, I don't feel like those aches and pains last longer than a K or two when I'm wearing this. Everything sort of seems to be effortless. Um, not as quick, I will say, as the Nike series, but when I'm running in the Ciccone Endorphin Pro 2, especially on those bigger weeks where I'm clocking up upwards of 130 Ks, chucking on a shoe like this, I really do just feel like I'm running in those daily trainers, but with a few superpowers baked into my shoes. So I gotta say that with this lineup, I mean, I've been running in just that seven different pairs of shoes for the last 1300 Ks or so, as I said at the beginning of this video. Um, and to be honest, I'm really happy with that approach that I've taken because that lineup has, I, I guess, a relatively um, nice bit of variety in there. It's using shoes with slightly different technologies. And actually, by spreading my mileage over seven different pairs of shoes, that's definitely helped me and my budget to actually replace shoes as I go. I'm not buying shoes as often as you may think. And actually, after this marathon training plan, I may get a few few more miles out some of these shoes but really before I start my next marathon training plan whenever that may be I probably will go and replace most of these shoes just to be on the safe side but that has pretty much been all for episode 11 of the Port Ferry Ferry as always the comment section down below is open to questions from you guys I'd be happy to talk about anything that I have mentioned in this video and just as a reminder, I would love for you guys to check out that conversation I had with Ben Curtis, which I've listed down in the description. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And as we like to say during this training series, best is love, test the guff. Happy running and happy training. See you all soon.